Hi, this is Bob Maslin, Blade from the Home Seer Message Board. And today I wanted to go over um, BLG data uh, for Home Seer 3. Uh, what this plugin allows you to do is it allows you to interface with Google data um, for multiple users. So you can, you can set up as many Google users as you want in the plugin and um, interface with Google data such as calendars, um, tasks, um, I've added in Google Plus, just uh, very basic at this moment. Um, you can also uh, interface with Google Voice. Um, and um, let me just see, there's a few other ones. Uh, contacts as well. Um, so it'll list up your Google Contacts and you can view them. Um, so let's, let's go through the options first. Um, the first option there is reset authentication. So what it'll do is it'll reset the Google API authentication for all users in the plugin. Um, it'll ca it, uh, that will cause you to have to reauthorize access to all Google APIs. So Google has um, API calls uh, in order to access uh, calendars or uh, tasks or Google Plus. And you have to set up an account uh, for this. Uh, it's very simple. I have it. Um, I have a document in your home seer under your home seer root folder. There's a docs folder. Uh, this document will get put in there. Basically, it tells you how to set that up. It's very easy. Um, you go to the site here, um, sign in with your Google account, um, and then create a um, an OAuth 2.0 client ID and key. Um, it's not very long. It's only a few pages of steps. It's it's very simple, um, pretty detailed. You shouldn't have any issues doing this. Once you have that information, um, when you um, use your user account, you put that data in here, in your client ID and your key. Um, that way you can, you have to do that for each user that you add to the system. You have to create an account through that document. Um, there's a date format. You can choose whether it's a month, day, year, or day, month, year. Uh, number of contacts per page, 15. I think it defaults to 25. I changed it to 15. Um, email method. This is used for um, sending out notifications. Uh, I'll, I'll get into what notifications are uh, later on. Uh, but you can choose either to use BL email or Home Seer to do that. Um, you can create charts in the plugin using Google Charts. Uh, right now I have um, some scripting calls that allow you to do that. Um, we'll go through that once we get to that section. But here we can, you can specify the default width and height uh, for charts and for a gauge um, and whether or not you want to prefix the chart files that are created with the date and time. Um, I, I do that. I like to know when I created it. Um, this look and feel options allows you to um, add the plug-in menu on the calendars, on, on basically calendars, contacts, tasks, voice, and, and Google Plus pages. Um, Google Plus doesn't, or not Google Plus, but Google Voice doesn't work here in Canada, so I'm not going to be able to show you that. Um, but um, there are t a couple scripting calls to place calls and send SMS messages as well. Um, if you're in the U.S., um, it should work fine for you if you have an account. Uh, let's go to the users page here. So here's a couple users I've set up, uh, mine and my wife. Um, you can with each user you can specify which which things you want to show here so for mine I'm showing them all for my wife's I'm only showing um, uh, a couple of them um, so if we go into calendars this loads up you have, I have two calendars I have a personal calendar and a household activities calendar uh, if, I, if I view my personal calendar which just has some test stuff in it um, you can see it basically brings a calendar up here um, so we can create a new event right here by selecting all the information here and hitting create. Um, now it um, doesn't refresh the calendar um, automatically yet. I haven't fixed that yet. But if you click refresh up here, it will refresh. You can delete the calendar by clicking this here. Um, be careful. If you delete it, it's gone. Um, so it allows you to click on each one of these and see you know, basic data from the calendar. Um, let's, let's go back to the calendars. Um, today reminders, it'll, it'll basically list another page with the reminders for today. 
Um, let's see, go to users. Um, contacts, I'm not going to display contacts just because I don't want any of my contacts showing up in the video. Um, but when you click that, it'll, it'll pop up another page with a, a list of a table of contacts. Uh, you can page through them page by page or and you can click on a contact and it'll show another window down below with the details of, for that contact phone numbers and uh, their image if they have a, a picture um, so let's go into the tasks here's where you're going to be authorizing so you'll get a pop-up like this you click accept it'll take you to another page where you have to copy this code so I just copy it and then there'll be another window down here you're looking for this window here so you need to paste that code into there click OK and this here screen now is loaded so you can close this so it, it's a one-time process um, currently tasks and uh, Google Plus use that method for authentication so but either once you go into either one once you've authorized for one the other one will be fine too so you can you can um, so we're in the tasks um, we can you know show up different tasks lists here you can create a task list by hitting here put a new name in hit it hit uh, create task list and it'll create a new task list for you um, if you click on one of the tasks it will show the information about it down here you can mark it complete um, or you can delete the task or you can create a new task if you click here it'll create a new task for you um, and it'll, it'll put it into the task list that you've selected here um, pretty basic um, if we go into um, I'll just go into Google Plus just show you it's just basic right now so it'll it'll show you basic information about yourself um, I've got the friends popping up activity I don't have any activity yet coming soon um, but I plan to show the activity in here basic activity not you know detailed like to say but um, <coughs> Now, um, handlers. Uh, let's let's talk about handlers. Um, from a uh, let's talk about the home seer commands first. Um, for a calendar, you can um, when you're creating a calendar entry in the event description, you can put in a um, a home seer command. Now, the structure for the home seer commands are um, are listed in the help page. Uh, basically it's uh, HS open bracket the command the data uh, command a squiggly and then the data and a closing bracket <clears throat> so there's some examples here um, let's go I'll go down to the examples this just shows you how to do each one but there's some examples down here that will show you you know what I'm talking about here if you want to run an event in home here run an event and then the name of the event uh, enable event disable delete run a script you can run a script passing in parameters um, you can speak a command control the device um, the control device takes either the device code the address or the name it'll use either one um, if you specify a, a dim then specify the dim value as well um, you can toggle the device so if it's on it'll turn it off if it's off it'll turn it on um, you can launch a program um, all of these are explained above um, in what each uh, parameter means. You can send an email, you can write a log message, you can set a device string. Uh, like once again, it can be you can either pass in the code, the name, or the address. Same with the value, code name, or address. Um, so if you wanted to, you can also run a function in a plugin, like a scripting call in a plugin from here by specifying this. So if you if you wanted to call um, from, for example, from BL Reminders, there's a scripting call called Enable All Reminders for Category. Um, the category would be Work. So it's expecting you to pass in a string, um, and then this is just the format for passing in a string. Um, this shows you here how to pass in multiple strings. So for um, this here is the plugin instance in here. So if you have a plugin instance, you specify it there. BLAB8SS, so we want to toggle the speaker, and we're going to toggle speaker 4 from ABS switch number 1. So it uses a pipe to delimit them. Um, should be pretty straightforward. Um, might take a bit to get used to, but um, I think um, 
I think this feature alone is what a lot of people will like because they can basically do anything they want in Homeseer from their events when they execute. Because once the event executes, it will um, process these. And you can put multiples of these in your event. Um, or you can um, or you can do what's with what we call as handlers. So a handler is um, uh, basically is a um, contains a whole bunch of different Homeseer commands. Um, so that you don't have to specify a whole bunch in there. You could just create a handler Holiday start and then it just you know speak. This is a test one two and three so if you wanted to call that from your um, Page from your uh, event description you would specify HSH so home seer handler and then the name of the handler in brackets and then it would execute all of these when it executes, it would execute these one at a time in the order that you entered them. So it just gives you some power to do what you want from your calendar events. Um, uh, let's see here. So handler, you, you know, basically add a handler, put in the name, and start start entering the commands and add it. It's very simple. Um, you can edit them. You can even test them from here. If you click test, it'll actually test these. Um, and it'll actually speak one, two, and three here. Um, notifications. Notifications are um, a, um, let's see here, we'll go in here, we'll add one. So you put in a notification name, you specify the condition. So if an error message is written to home seer log, warning message, speaker client connects, disconnects, a new device is added, you, there's a whole bunch here that you can trigger off of. Um, um, and there's um, two actions you can do right now. You can send SMS, which uses your Google Voice. So you specify which user you want. Uh, you specify the number you want to send to and the message. Or you can send an email as well. Um, or you can do both. Um, it'll do both if you want. Um, but you can specify whatever condition you want here. Um, so, And once again, the notifications are, are in here. And they are listed here, which ones you can do. Um, and which ones um, now there's special variable names too once the condition um, <coughs> executes so in your in your message here and in in your SMS message and your email message you can use these special variables so if if you um, if you, say for example if you chose a speaker connects I think that's one I have here I think that's one I have yeah speaker connects I send an email so in my email message I can say you know this is a t um, I could actually put these these variables in here and it will substitute the value of whatever speaker host or instance or client IP address in your message here so if I wanted to put in the host here I can uh, I could do that's not what I wanted. Speaker client host. So if we just type that in, that would actually substitute the speaker client host in the in the message for you. So pretty straightforward. Um, but all those all those variable names, special names, are listed for each one of them here. Uh, you can even do on caller ID received. Um, uh, the um, that's um, uh, once again charts. Okay, so there's there's scripting calls in here for charts. I have them here. They're near the bottom. So there's um, you know if you want to make a a line chart, you know there's a scripting call called make line chart. It's expecting these parameters and it returns back basically the HTML code. So it also um, allows you to, to put in a file name here this is a full path to a file name so do not include the extension of the file name because it will be HTML but um, put in the name of the file name in here and it will create an HTML file for you and put it into this area here so you can view them so this is an example here <coughs> if um, so we're creating some labels 
um, and, and two data values because the line chart needs two. Um, so we've created, um, uh, so we, we make the call to the plugin, make line chart, new object, we pass in the title, so this is the title. Uh, we pass in the file name, so this is going to be the file name, no extension. Um, and then the labels, you'd pass in the labels, and then the two data objects. So the labels is a string array, and the data objects are just object arrays. So you can pass in, you know, strings, um, numbers, um, whatever in there. And when you, uh, when you do that, it creates these files. So you can click on them and display your, your um, it will display your um, charts right in as an HTML page. So you can, you don't have to create the files. You can leave the file blank. If you leave this at, if you leave this value blank in there, it won't create the file, but it will still return you back the HTML code, and you can do whatever you want with it. Um, that's uh, that's pretty much it for the plugin so far. Like I said, it's still in process of being added to. Um, but um, hope you've enjoyed this. Hope it's been helpful, um, and um, we'll talk to you later. Thanks.